everyone, welcome to this lecture on Gamma Camera. For some years, nuclear images were obtained by using a rectilinear scanner. Currently, nuclear imaging is done with the use of a Gamma Camera. You can think that this camera takes a picture of a gamma-emitting radioactive source coming out from the patient injected with the radioactive substance. In this lecture, I will introduce the Gamma Camera. This is the outline of this lecture. I will start with an introduction to radionuclear imaging, followed by the components of a gamma camera, then detection system, the collimators, and the different types of event of detection. The objective of radionuclear imaging is to obtain the distribution of radioactive labeled substance within the body of the patient after it has been administered to the patient, usually through intravenous injection. A DPD scan is a type of nuclear imaging test as sh shown here at the right, which uses a radioactive technetium 99M and DPD to diagnose cardiac amyloidosis, shown here. For nuclear medicine, gamma ray emissions are utilized because it can penetrate the body tissues and can be stopped effectively by scintillation system, and are shielded with lead. On the other hand, particle radiations, such as your alpha particles, beta particles, are not that important in image formation. Let's go to a little bit of history of gamma camera. Around the year 1950s, Hal Anger used a pinhole aperture in a sheet of lead to project gamma ray image onto a radiation detector which is a combination of sodium iodide doped with thallium crystals and a sheet of X-ray film. In the process, the film is exposed to scintillation flashes from the sodium iodide crystals. However, this is inefficient since it requires long exposures and therapeutic level of radioactivity, exposing the patient to large radiation dose. Later on, anger replaced this by combining the sodium iodide crystals with photomultiplier tubes or PMTs. It produces a better image quality, detection efficiency, and can be easily used in a hospital setting. Now let's go to the main components of the gamma camera. We have the following. The collimator, the sodium iodide doped with thallium scintillation crystals, the one uh, in yellow here. Then we have a light guide followed by the PMTs or the photomultiplier tubes. Other parts in these figures includes the following. So this is surrounded by a shielding shown in gray. Then we have the pulse circuit connected to the digitizer, which includes the amplifier, and the analog to digital converter, or ADC. Then we have the pulse height analyzer here. The signals will go now to the computer for processing. So I have this illustration. The patient will release gamma rays, and the first layer here is the collimator. The collimator is composed of a lead plate with large number of holes. It controls which gamma rays are accepted and it defines the direction of gamma rays. This will produce a gamma distribution projected to the scintillation crystals. The scintillation crystals, shown here in yellow, commonly made out of sodium iodide doped with thallium, converts gamma rays to light. Its main function is to absorb the gamma photons and convert it into a light image. The photomultiplier tube, shown here in green, also called the phototubes, are electronic tubes that produces a pulse of electric current once stimulated by weak light signals from the crystals. Signals from the PM tubes are then sent to the digital position circuit. This computes the X and Y location of each scintillation events. Then, 
we will have this correction here, the linearity and uniformity correction. Gamma is emitted equally distributed in all directions, as shown here in my drawing. So let's say this is a radioactive substance emitting gammas, as shown. Then we have this gamma camera, and this will form this image. The yellow uh, refers to the signal. However, small fraction of this photon emission are only utilized in, in the image formation. The sensitivity of a gamma camera is expressed as the number of photons detected and used in the image as detected in the image form in my drawing for each unit of radioactivity or in terms of microcurie. Camera sensitivities generally range of 100 to 1000 CPS or counts per second over microcurie. So next we have the field of view or FOV and this determines how much of the patient's body can be imaged at any one time. The FOV depends on the crystal size, the collimator type, and the distance between the object being imaged and the camera crystals. Now let's go to this illustration. Let's say we have a patient emitting gamma ray, a single event. Then this single event is detected by the system with the collimator and the scintillation crystals. D1 here and D2 refers to the lateral distance with respect to the center of our PMTs. Ideally, the amount of detected light by the photomultiplier tube is inversely related to the lateral distance and the center of the PMT. We also have here the signal detected by this first PMT S1, then a smaller signal here for S2. The relationship between the signal amplitude and location with respect to the PMT center would be linear. And if that's the case, then we can express the following, wherein D here is equal to D1 plus D2. Okay, now let's talk about position and energy estimation in the detection system of gamma camera. The goal of the radiation detector is to provide an estimate of the energy and interaction position of each gamma ray incident on the detector. We have this resistive network used to implement the position uh, estimation. Let's say we have a single photomultiplier tube here, PMT. Then we have four outputs. The output from each PMT or preamplifier is divided by a resistive network with four outputs shown here. We have X plus with the resistor here. Uh, we have X minus another resistor. Then we have Y plus with another resistor in between. Then we have Y minus with another resistor. Thus, we can determine the position using the signals on these four output lines. The X and Y position can be computed using these formulas. For the X, uh, you, will, you will use this uh, outputs. Then for the Y, you're going to use these outputs. In early gamma cameras, the computations uh, above were performed using analog circuits. In current systems, the computations are performed digitally. However, these equations does not perfectly map the source position given that our PMT uh, signal does not actually vary linearly. Let's talk about energy estimation. Energy selection provides a means to discriminate against gamma rays that have been scattered and lost their positional information. This is done by narrow pulse height analyzer window centered on the photopic P illustrated in this figure. Pulse height analyzer principle is described by this picture. We have three pulses, let's say, pulse 1, pulse 2, and pulse 3 are detected at different times of T. Two discriminators emit a counting signal if their set voltage level is reached by a pulse. Pulse 2, shown here, triggers the lower level E sub L, but not the upper level E sub U. 
pulse 2 is thus counted on the spectral uh, region denoted by P. However, for the case of pulse 1, your pulse 1 is detected by both EU and E sub L. However, we want those signals somewhere in between EU and EL. So thus, your pulse 1 is not counted. The anti-coincidence counter prevents a pulse from being sorted in more than one region as shown here. So thus, the output is pulse number 2. Collimators are used as mechanical lenses to provide information about the activity on a unique line through the object called the line of response or LOR. The collimator prevents photons emitted along directions that do not lie along the line of response from reaching the detector. We usually uh, use hexagonal holes in continuous crystals camera. The basic types of collimators according to the hole geometry are the following. We have pinhole, parallel, diverging, and converging. Collimators according to energy range can be classified into three. We have the low energy, medium energy, and high energy. Energy range should take into account high energy photons even if not included in the image. First, we have the pinhole collimator, then we have the parallel collimator. For the pinhole, the focal point is placed between the image plane and the object being image. We have these distances and we can define the image size uh, over the object size O, shown here, which is equal to the distance F over B. The distance F is this distance from the pinhole with respect to the image plane and the B is the distance from the object to the pinhole. For the parallel uh, collimator, it is the most frequently used geometry and it has a 1 is to 1 ratio between the object and the image size. Third type of collimator is converging collimator. Fourth type is diverging collimator. Converging collimator is used for image magnification. This is used to image small organs. The ratio of the image size with respect to the object is equal to this expression. Next, for the diverging collimator, this is used to image large objects in small field of view camera. The image size with respect to the object size is equal to this ratio. There are four types of event detection uh, that may be detected by the gamma camera, which is illustrated here. First, we have the valid event. In this event, a gamma ray is emitted parallel to the collimator holes and it passes through the hole until it reaches the sodium iodide crystals, depositing all of its energy at a single location only. Second event is the detector scatter, shown here. This is a gamma ray which is emitted parallel to the collimator holes, passes through the hole, but it interacts with your crystals through Compton scattering thus producing another gamma ray which interacts with your photomultiplier tube. Third event is the object scatter event illustrated inside the patient as shown here before it interacts with your crystal. The gamma ray is not emitted toward the collimator holes but scattered within the body first. Then it passes through the collimator and subsequently detected by the system. Last is the septal penetration, shown here. In this case, a gamma ray is emitted toward the collimator but not parallel into it. This causes blurring in the image. Gamma camera systems is utilized first in planar gamma cameras to produce 2D images. Second, we have the single photon emission computed tomographic systems or SPECT to produce 3D images. And that's it for this lecture. Hi! If you have learned something in this video and you like my content, please consider subscribing my YouTube channel, JP Academia. See you in the next video.